the sounds of a parking lot. Here we are with Lulu and we are going to show you a tour of her brand new van. She's going to tell you the story of how she lost her van. Yeah, R.I.P. <laughs> And it was a wonderful van. I'm sure some of you saw her van tour. So we're going to do an update today. And she's going to tell us the story of what happened to her van. Hi, Lulu. Hi. Hello, everybody. Um, so I enjoyed my last van tour on Jan's channel with my Dodge Grand Caravan, 2005 Dodge Grand Caravan that I had built out. Um, I, what happened was I was planning a trip. I was planning my road trip. And... Um, Yep, there's noise, but that's just... We're at a parking lot, yep. so what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Before I go on a road trip is I bring my van to my mechanic, and I say, check it out thoroughly. So he called me, and he's like, I have some bad news for you, Lulu. I was like, what? He's like, you're done. You're done. This van is done. He said, you have axle tubing rot. He said, look at your right tire. It was, like, tilted. <laughs> he's like, it's like, it's breaking. He said, if you ever left, if you ever left, and that, the back was going to drop. Ugh. Yeah. And, and if I was moving when it dropped, it likely wouldn't have, wouldn't have ended well. You know, those, those things that don't end well. Yeah, that wouldn't have ended well. And it was funny because all I was thinking was like, oh, I want to go on my road trip. I was so disappointed that I wasn't going to go on my road because I was in the middle of planning it. I decided like, all right, let me just start calling places and see who's got vans. We have no vans. Nobody has any vans. And I guess it's, it's about the chip the chip shortage. Yeah. And the chip, yeah they're just they're having trouble. Keep, the ones that are showing up that are used are going like great. So I found one uh, dealership in my area and they said, oh, we have a, we have a Promaster City 2016, 83,000 miles. And uh, so I was like, can I come and look at it? I went to look at it and I so just the same way I have my cars checked out if I'm going on a road trip I have my cars checked out before I buy them he said he was really shocked at how how what great shape it was in there's no supply and big demand so they can ask 10,000 over asking price so I went down and I said can you ask can you answer me why on the on the Kelly blue book it says it's worth 16 max and you sound up at 26 he's like supply and demand mm -hmm. so I'm like do I want to spend ten thousand dollars more than it's even worth yeah I want it the chip, chip shortage. shortage yeah so I just bought it I just bought it mm -hmm. well I had two choices I'm either gonna uh, not go on my trip and take a couple of months to do a proper build in the freezing cold at home which would be extremely unenjoyable and who wants to work in the garage when your hands are cold you know putting a build together or I could just throw something together, get my butt down to down south where it's warm, enjoy a couple of months in the sun, then go back. And I thought it would be even uh, more wise to do that because I threw it together with whatever I had, just a bunch of junk in the garage, I threw it together, and I, I have it where it's functional. It's actually tour worthy, which is why we're doing this right now. It's it's not like, oh, you, I'm a little embarrassed. No, it's awesome. It's, <laughs> it is, it's awesome. As I'm using it, I feel like my final build, things will be chosen with, with much more wisdom because I've never, I've never used this kind of space before. By the time I got to Florida, I already had a whole list of things that needed to be rearranged and changed and, mm -hmm. and I, I did it. I parked somewhere and I just did it like a dump and I just jumped and rearranged. I was like, no, this is where the dishes go. This is where the laundry should go, you know, and I just, I, I just uh, tweaked it all. But as far as like the build goes, that's that's what's going through right the now. The final. That will be when I get home. And when I get home, it will be spring. This is the, the, the front cabin. But what I keep here is I have this little organizer, this little box here uh, for a front seat, which is really lovely. And uh, it has pockets, things. I keep you know napkins in here. I keep my notes in here, cables and stuff. Then I have my backpack in here. And this is kind of like my purse. You know, I have all my all my personal things in here. I would grab that to go into the grocery store or something. And then here is where I stack all these packing cubes of clothes. So like this is all shorts. This is all socks and undies. This is dresses. This is tops. This is jammies. And I just stack them all right there. And then this is the great spot right here for my 
camping stove. Right. This is my butane stove, one burner camping stove. And then right behind it is the little windshield that you put around it. Right. When you're cooking, you just put it around and it's a it's a game changer because mm -hmm. if there's a teeny bit of wind. Um, you're losing butane for yeah, one thing. Yeah, you're either it's either going to put the flame out or it's gonna weaken the flame. Mm -hmm. Then you'll just see nothing's really sizzling. The, when I cook inside and I cook right here, I would put the stove here and then I would put this around it like that which is wonderful because it just won't dirty up things over here. Mm -hmm. It keeps it keeps the flame contained. I crack the door like this and I sit right there. It's just perfect. It works really well. And then I just have a tripod that here. So I have a YouTube channel now. Uh, I didn't have one. The last, time, the last tour I had, I didn't have one. And it was in the other van. And then I had no van. I was like, oh, now I have a YouTube channel and I have no van. So I was like, well, you know, you know, I always say, like, you know, I make my plans in pencil, God has the ink. This is my car wash. <laughs> you know, when my car gets yucky, and I just like to wipe it down the same way I clean things inside. So I was just like, I just bought these little wipes and I cleaned my mirrors and the windows and the whole back of the van with yesterday was like splashed with stuff. And I just, I just wiped it. I was in a parking lot. I was in Walmart parking lot doing a little car wash in the yeah. back. You know, it's just... You work with what you got. Um, down here on the floor of my passenger seat is where I keep a, D a little DC fridge. And this is, a, um, this is on my channel. I make, I give instructions. I made this. I made this little um, insulated cover. My channel is called Lulu's Way. There'll be a link in the description of the video below. There you go. And yeah, come on over. Come on over. And. Um, I'm not I'm not a, a, a seasoned uh, filmer like like Jan, but she's helping me. She's wonderful. I just designed it so that all the vents weren't covered. Can't cover the vents, and it was just just to kind of protect it from the sun with this Reflectix bubble stuff. It's a 12 volt refrigerator. It's a nine quart refrigerator. It's tiny, 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 and I set it on freezer um, the same way I did in my minivan. I set it on like three degrees. It fits six of these. So these are getting frozen. And in my cooler, which I'll show you later, is where I keep another six that are frozen. And then, so these are, these are freezing and those are in the middle of thawing. So if I had a DC fridge that was big enough to hold my, um, to hold all my food, it would be really big because these things take up these things have space and then when you open them up the actual storage space in them is tiny I don't want to be stopping for ice I don't want ice draining I could fit one head of lettuce in there if I was gonna put food in there it fits six of these lined up like that so that's how much space is in that size fridge I have a floor in here that I just happen to have I happen to have a uh, four by six um, piece of plywood that had this flooring on it. Who even has that sitting around in the garage? Mm. I did and I'll tell you what it was about. It was it's a um, when I turned 60 which was four years ago I turned 60 and I decided that I wanted to uh, bring my childhood back and take tap dancing lessons. So I took I was taking tap dancing lessons and I'm good. I'm good at it. Oh god is it fun. It's like playing drums with your feet. It's yeah. like percussion. It was it's just a blast and it's not easy but it's fun. Uh, it really, more so than the actual dancing itself, um, what I found the most challenging is was the, the memorizing, the memorizing the whole routines and stuff. But geez, was it fun. So I had this tap dance floor, four by six. The floor space in here is uh, four by seven. So I was like, I was just short like a foot and I, I slid it right in here and it was right between the wheel wells, like absolute perfection. To extend it out, I just got this piece of wood and I just cut it and then I just, I, this isn't even like the appropriate hardware, but it's what I had. It was L-shaped and I just banged it with a hammer to make it flat just to attach these two things like this. And then it just gives me that, well see the, the Bluetti needed, needed it, see the leg of the table over there, that's what really needed it. And then this is where I keep all my books, that's my, that's my library. I, it was amazing to see how much space was under the uh, under the seat. It goes really far in, and then over there, equally as much space. And that's my shoe storage. So my shoes and my books, 
and then this is my this is my broom that you use especially if you're staying at the beach you're using this all day long I have a piece of this this little foam stuff I keep one piece here I keep one piece at the other door because you you kneel on this stuff <laughs> on a hard floor my knees were killing me but if I need if I want to reach in and grab my phone I want to reach in and put something in the trash then um, this thing saves my knees I would get in like this. That's there you go. I'm going to show you. This is my blackout curtain. So I don't have any windows back here. And I'm really grateful that this van came with no windows because I have the option of putting windows anywhere I want. And they won't be stationary. They would be ones with that slide open like screens, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I could put them, I could do them on the ceiling. I could do them on the sides. But I thought it would be kind of, detrimental to go on this trip and not have any windows I thought like I'm gonna go nuts I kind of like it I don't know if I'm gonna put any windows in I'm mm. kind of liking this it's just I like all the I can do everything I don't I'm not limited I can put put stuff on the walls and I like that and I think what I'm thinking of is putting in like a big skylight so to have my um, my window on the ceiling that's what I'm thinking oh yeah so the only windows I have really are the, the passenger driver windshield so when I'm when I'm at uh, like a cracker barrel sleeping or a uh, if I'm at a campground I, I don't do this but if I'm somewhere I I just have this blackout fabric it's like the thermal like it's you know it's got this on the inside the, the rubbery stuff mm -hmm. so of course I want the black face in this way because if somebody looks in here they'll just see black and then I just sewed magnets see you can see the magnets this long right little strips of magnets and there's one here and there's one oh there's, see they stick together so now i just find the center and i go like this i go like this then i go like this can't do that with a headliner no and then you go like this right and i go like this I'm nothing assuming, well of course it's not all the way across but you get the idea you yeah see but you know nothing. what i do is i um when this door is closed see this see this loop right here this this handle mm -hmm. this handle would be right here when the door is closed i just stick this all that in good. i stick this in the loop like that right then it's like that yeah, and then when i take it down you just go like this put it together all i gotta do is pull just pull it all off like this and i just hold it like this and it goes right here this is where its home is, right there. And that serves me well. I found scrap pieces of wood in the garage and I made my little table for over my Blue Eddy. And then, uh, so my daughter, my daughter had this, this cubby, this cubby shelf system. So it's got those 11 by 11 by 11 uh, boxes in each one. And it holds eight. And she had this in her room for a while. She found it on the side of the road. She's a chip off the old block. So here's the um, here's the ladder to get on the roof. I needed a small ladder, and I found one. Well, that's small. It's a small ladder. It's called To Enjoy. So basically, it has this little hook here, and this every every door every door on a car has a latch. That's how the door latch is closed. You just hook it on this latch. You you put you put these these little things out right until they go against there, and then as soon as you see that this is flat. And then you push down on it, it's nice and sturdy. You go like this, and you go like this, and you go like this. And look at how high you can get. And I can reach anything in this cargo bag. I can reach way on the other side of it. I can see what's in it. It works like a charm. It works like a charm. But let me let me say something. Um, I use this in my minivan, and I can use it in here. But when I was at a meetup once, um, uh, the meetup where I met you, Jan. Mm -hmm. um, there was women that were seeing this, and they were like, oh, "I want to get that! I want to get that!" But they had a bigger van, like a say a Class B van mm -hmm. or a conversion van, one of those. And I said, "You know something? Before you buy one, why don't you take this and go try it and see if you can, if it works for you?" So they took it, and they come back. None of them can. If you have a higher van than this, if you have more than a car, a minivan, or a mini cargo van, you might want to think it may not work. But if you need to get on your roof to clean your solar panels, or if you have the roof thing, whatever you need, this is it. What I did here was I have my Blue Eddy. It's a 
2000 watt solar power station. I can charge it if I'm plugged in, which is very rarely, but if I'm plugged in and, I, and I'm using, I can plug this into AC, um, what, I, what I would do is I don't plug in to shore power and bring a power cord in here to use. I use, I plug it in here charging this because this thing has, so it has six plugs and it has all these USB plugs, four of them I think, and it has this USB-C plug. This is where I can plug my fridge in while I'm driving. So what I use this for is I use it for my fridge if I'm not driving to freeze my ice. I use it to charge my iPad and my phone and I use it for a pressure cooker to cook. I have a coffee maker and a coffee grinder that I use every day that I want electricity for. And I also have a, a USB fan that I keep charged if I need some airflow. And I think that's all my electrical needs. And it all, and this is kind of centered so you can reach, most cords will reach to here from the, yes, anywhere in the van pretty exactly, much. Exactly, yes. Or I'll bring the, I'll bring the pressure cooker right here. Mm -hmm. Or if I cook in, in the, out in the back, out in the back of the van, um, I have an extension cord that's just like a six foot extension cord and I plug it in here and then I bring it down there and plug my pressure cooker out back. Mm -hmm. I also have a, 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 I keep up here, I keep a first aid kit and I keep um, the extension cord for the short one to, so that I can plug from here to the out back for my pressure cooker. And then also I have uh, like a 30 foot extension cord if I need to plug in at a campground or at somebody's house. And then out uh, oh, down the very end there, I have one of those headlamps. So what I did was I built this table because I wanted to put a table over this because I found myself using this as a table. And I said, oh, you're going to spill something and it's going to spill all over your electric item and it's going to be the end of that, right? So I, I, what I did was I built this little table. Now, I am not a furniture builder and I just got the scraps out of my uh, garage and it, it actually just sits over. I mean, I could take this off and use it somewhere else if I wanted to, but I just used L brackets. <laughs> I just took, I just measured this space and I cut it with a saw. Then I found these legs, I found them in Lowe's. They were like in the deck department mm -hmm. and they were twice as long as this. So I bought two of them and cut them in half, mm -hmm. made them all the same size. Then I just got these, these, these L brackets. And I know there's much better ways to build furniture. I'm not a furniture builder, but this is what I need. But that works. Yeah. And it's stable. It's stable. And I just put a, I'm, I'm finding that like, I wanted to paint it and have it all pretty before I left, but it was more important to to leave. <laughs> yeah. I want to leave and get on the road. So I just went to Walmart and got one of these plasticky placemats and there you go. Yeah. Now I don't even need to paint it. And um, so that takes care of this corner. Now right here I have this right where the table ends and where the door closes I have this space and we use every space every square inch. This is where I store my two solar panels. So these are my solar panels. This is one. Those and are kind of heavy too aren't they? Heavy and they're uh, 200 watts a piece. So I need 400 just to even get this power system going. Like I, I couldn't even, if I plug one in, it, it does nothing. Yeah. If I plug two in, it- More power. Oh yeah. So what I do is if I'm at like, if I'm somewhere that I can put them out, they have, they, they open up in, 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 and they, they're folded in fourths. And I can each each piece has like a little kickstand, kickstand like this, so they can stand up like this on the ground, and it's like that every piece. Every and you piece. angle it toward the sun. Yeah, so you you would angle it towards the sun. I'd have them like this. The sun's coming here. I'd have one like this and one like this, and then if the sun moves there, then I can just reposition them all day long. But what I do when I'm at a rest stop. Or a, like a parking lot like you really don't want to be taking up a parking space with them so what I do what what I do is in the zipper part is all the is all the, the wires so I need to connect these wires to the other one and then then connect them both to because the the, you have two of those solar panels yep and so I'm not going to do the whole wire thing right now but let's just say those wires 
hanging down. Mm -hmm. What I do is just to very neatly and self-contained. So I put this right here and I go like this and then I go like this and then I go like this. That's easy. And I, tuck, I tuck it right under there. Nice. And then I put the other one right there and then I plug them into each other. Right. And then the other plug comes down here and then just plugs right into here. This goes into the system. And here's my second one. And I just have them sitting here with a bungee. It's awesome. It's <laughs> really, it is. It's awesome. Yeah. You know? And then, so it just made more sense for me to do it this way. And it's not really my style to do things that are like, when it, not when it's perfect. But it's just, I, I just said, you know, Lulu, go for it. Go and get, the, get and enjoy the weather. And I am so glad I did.